What's going on guys and welcome to today's video and today we are in the garage with Hi-Ho Silver here and it may be for one of the last times we have it on the channel here. Um, we are finishing up kind of the final thing on this thing, the final big annoying issue and that is the rear axle shaft bearing that has been screaming since day one on this thing. It's just kind of one of the final loose ends that I'm finally finishing up. Now uh, we are in the garage here and uh, it's it's been triple digits here in Kansas here for the last multiple days. So even at night while I'm filming in the garage, it feels like an oven that's like 120 degrees. So uh, yeah, it, it's not very good conditions, but I've got to get this taken care of because this thing might be going to its new home in just a few days. We kind of did everything we needed to do with this thing. We drug it home dead off the side of the road and gave it a new life. You know, as you guys knew, we got the engine running. After a lot, a lot of work, we ended up having to put a transmission in this thing. We gave it its little bit of lift. We gave it some tire. It, it's kind of a respectful Jeep now. This interior was absolutely destroyed and now it's kind of respectable. It's, it's, it's a real Jeep now. And guys, that's kind of what my plan or what I've been doing here on the WJ rescue mission on these last few Jeeps is just trying to save some good ones from being sent to the scrapyard because it always really sucks seeing nice Jeeps in the salvage yard for, for no reason. So hopefully these will get a second chance at life and hopefully the new owners will care about them as much as I do and maybe they'll keep them going and keep some nice ones on the road. But enough talking, we need to get this axle shaft out of the rear axle and then we need to get it into the shop and uh, we will kind of talk about how we actually do that. Now, no, you may not have a Jeep Grand Cherokee that you're doing a rear axle shaft bearing on, um, but this is kind of a similar repair on a lot of rear solid axle vehicles. Um, this is not a C-clip style rear axle where you've got to pull the diff cover. We're gonna be unbolting the rear bearing or axle retainer, and then basically the shaft will pull out. So as you guys can see, I've already obviously got the wheel off. We are going to need to pull the two bolts that hold the caliper on and we will get that thrown out of the way. We'll get the caliper off. And then if you guys can hopefully see back here in the dark, um, we've got a couple of nuts that hold that axle retainer on. There are actually four of those retainers and then basically that axle shaft will come out. So. I'll quit talking, we'll get some of these bolts out, we'll get the axle shaft out, um, and then like I said, we'll get it into the shop, and the way I do it at least is I cut the bearing and the lock ring off, we'll put a new seal bearing lock ring, press it on, and then we'll be back in business. So, like I said, let's get this axle shaft out of here and then we will uh, get to the shop. So like I said, first things first, we need to get the caliper off and at least in second gen Grand Cherokee world that is two 18 millimeter bolts and then we can get the caliper lifted off and laying back on the uh, control arms now your brake rotor is probably going to be a lot more stuck than mine. And normally if you just take a big heavy hammer and start hammering away in where the kind of hub or the wheel meets the rotor, that is kind of a safe place you can beat on the brakes. You don't really want to hit it on the um, rotor surface unless you are just putting new brakes on, then you can just beat the heck out of the rotors and not care. But normally these are gonna be pretty rusted on and you are gonna to have to beat on the kind of hub face pretty decently to get that broke loose. I have recently done rear brakes on this, so I'm very lucky and my rotors are just gonna fall off in my hand. Now next up is the four axle retainer, axle bearing retainer nuts, whatever you wanna call it. And those are gonna be on the back side of the brake backing plate. And again, there are four 
on the back side, and in this case, they are a 14 millimeter, and I don't have a Milwaukee here, so we are doing things by hand. This is unheard of. I, I don't know what to do with just a normal ratchet, but I'll get these four off, and then I'll show you how I normally am able to get these axle shafts out with a uh, relative not too much effort. Now guys, before we slide that axle shaft out, you kind of want to um, have the axle angled. Now I'll kind of explain how I'm doing that and why I'm doing that. If you guys can see, I've got a jack stand under just the left side of the axle shaft and the right side is sitting on the ground. Now I've moved this jack stand up as high as I possibly can and then lowered the jack down. And what that's done is taken that rear axle from being level and it's now put the left side as high as at least I possibly can without stacking stuff under that jack stand. Now what that's doing is shifting the rear axle and leaning it to one side. And what that's doing is taking any fluid that's in the axle shaft and sloshing it all the way over to the other side that I'm not working on. Because if that axle is totally level, and you were to remove one of the axle shafts, you're gonna have a decent amount of gear lube come pouring out of that axle tube, pending your axle is full like it properly should be. So the kind of cool pro tip that I've got for you is just jack one side of the axle that you're working on up as high as you possibly can, and then go ahead and pull the axle shaft. And a lot of the times you won't even lose a single drop of fluid that way. Now, next thing before we start prying on this axle is one thing you're gonna need to watch out for. There is a plastic wheel speed sensor. Most vehicles are gonna have a wheel speed sensor because of ABS. If you're working on an old Wrangler or something, you won't have a wheel speed sensor, but some of them did have ABS. So just be mindful that you do have a plastic wheel speed sensor. You could break off as you're prying that out. What I've found works really, really well is taking a pry bar and prying typically kind of in between the parking brake um, actuator and that axle shaft flange. And normally, if you just put a little bit of effort, just like that, you've got the axle shaft slid out of the axle housing. Now, yes, sometimes they are very, very stuck. I've had to use a slide hammer where you bolt onto the wheel studs and you start beating on the thing with a slide hammer, but I have found this pry bar method works really, really well. A lot of times you can basically just get a decent pry bar under there and push on it and pop the axle comes out. And now as you're pulling the shaft out, be mindful, it is probably going to be pretty greasy. Um, so I like to have a shop rag ready just to kind of collect some of the gear lube. So guys, now we can see this axle shaft is out and we've got down here at the bottom, we've got our retainer plate or bracket. We've got our axle seal here at the very bottom, our bearing and then our bearing lock ring. But if we do look, we do not have our outer bearing cage, and that has stayed in the axle housing. Um, a lot of times you can just reach your hands in here and slowly work the uh, bearing retainer out. If that doesn't work, um, a lot of times you can then take a pry bar. You can take that pry bar and kind of just get under the lip of that bearing. And in this case, once I actually got it kind of lined up and square, I was able just to slide it out by hand, but I've a lot of times have had these uh, outer bearing races very stuck in the housing and again, have to use a pry bar and kind of, you know, work getting in behind that race and eventually getting it out of there. Now, one thing I like to do is again, grab a shop rag and just kind of wad it up and put it in the very end. I, I don't know, it keeps something from falling in there. If a rock, a, a bolt, something weird from falling in and destroying your axle. Um, so that's, that's one thing I like to do just to uh, play it safe. So guys, that leaves us with our axle shaft, our new axle shaft seal bearing and lock ring. Now this comes with 
Now this Timken kit came with the new bearing and a new lock ring, and that is that kind of solid metal ring right there. Now there is actually a special tool that you can remove that lock ring, remove the bearing, and replace a seal. I have never used that in my entire life. If I am ever replacing the seal, typically that's what you're going into a axle shaft for. I'm putting a new bearing and putting a new lock ring. I, I don't know, call me wasteful, but if you're in there, you might as well replace them all, which leads me to how I remove the bearing and the lock ring since they are pressed on. Now again, I will show this once we get to the shop, but I take a air cutoff wheel, cut through the lock ring, cut through the bearing, knock those off, and then you can get to the seal, put your new seal on, put the new bearing on, put the new lock ring on, put this in a press, and then we will press all of this together. So let's get to the shop, let's cut this apart, let's get the new stuff on, and hopefully get this Jeep a little bit quieter going down the road. So guys, here you can see me cutting that axle shaft lock ring. I try to get that cut almost all the way through, but not all the way to where it will get into the axle shaft. And then I will also try to cut into that bearing cage. Uh, now I'll normally either take an air hammer or a hammer and screwdriver and knock the lock ring down and then a flat blade screwdriver and you can normally try to work that bearing cage off so you can get down to the inner bearing race. And I didn't quite get it cut all the way so I am cutting it the rest of the way and then like I said you can get that cage moved. And you can either cut the inner bearing race or, like I'm doing here, just use an air hammer and a lot of times just slide it right off the shaft. Once you get that all up and out of the way, I like to try to clean that axle shaft flange area and the bearing retainer so you can get ready to put the new seal bearing and lock ring on now. Pay attention to how the seal slides on because you could put it on backwards. Um, so put that on the correct way and then the bearing is going to have a curved side and a sharped edge side. Make sure that is curved side down towards the shaft and then throw that lock ring on. Now getting it into the shop press. Um, again, everything is stacked up and ready. And uh, of course, instead of just moving the press up, I'm going to stack as many spacers as I possibly can to make it a very lovely sketchy press. Um, honestly, these don't require too much effort or force to actually get pressed onto the uh, axle shaft. So once you've got that fully seated, you are gonna be ready to throw that back into the Jeep. All right guys, so now that we've got our new seal, bearing, and lock ring all pressed on, we are ready to throw this back into the axle housing. Um, now one little quick thing before I just kind of throw it on a time lapse because obviously the install is the same as what we did for the removal. Um, we'll have those four um, axle retainer nuts to hold the axle shaft in. We'll put our brake rotor on, we'll put our brake caliper on, and then our wheel finally. One thing I did want to, I guess at least mention before I put the axle shaft back in the axle housing is the fact you want to make sure there is some lube on this axle shaft bearing. 99% uh, of the time they come completely dry. Um, a lot of times I will just take a bottle of gear lube and just kind of dump it all the way around the bearing, spin it a few times and make sure it's at least got a little bit of lubrication because the first time you go out and drive, all the axle fluid may not have worked its way down the axle tube and lubricated that bearing. And that's the last thing you want is your brand new bearing to be ran dry and get scored, worn, whatever. Now this Timken bearing, Timken bearing, how, however you say that, this is probably the first bearing I've ever seen that they have packed with wheel bearing grease from the factory. Now that is awesome, that saves you a step. And all I've gotta do now is just throw the axle shaft in. So yeah, if you've got wheel bearing grease, just go ahead and pack the bearing, I guess. It's, it's totally up to you. Just get something on there before you throw the shaft in.
Now guys, just like that, we've got a quiet rear axle for the first time since I've had this thing or since I've been driving it and found out it was noisy. Now I kind of showed just quickly there at the shop that axle bearing race, but I will kind of uh, show it again here just because it is pretty blatant what our issue was. I don't even really need to go drive this thing because I know that was my issue. So guys, here is that inner bearing race and you can see how chewed up this is what it kind of should look like kind of nice chrome and as we roll this thing around you can see all of that damaged area there on the bearing race where it almost looks like four rollers now what causes bearing damage i don't know it could be it could have been a heavy shock load or just improper lubrication. The pinion seal was leaking on this thing. I've already replaced that, but if the fluid level was low and it had been driven and it was towing something, who knows? It, it does also have 190,000 miles and bearings do go bad by time, by wear, by mileage. So again, it could have just been a thing that would have worn out anyways, or it could have been the fact that it was potentially low on fluid, whatever. But the big thing is we now have a quiet rear axle. And if you didn't previously know how a solid rear axle bearing is, now this is not like a three quarter ton or a one ton truck. Most of those are a full floating axle where it, the axle shaft pulls out, the hub stays on the vehicle. So there's multiple different styles, but this is a pretty normal light duty style axle shaft. I don't know, hopefully that was interesting. And uh, the biggest thing is it's quiet now. So guys, thanks for coming out in the garage, the oven. Do we call it the oven? It's like 100 degrees outside. It feels like 120 in here. I'm actively sweating and losing weight, which isn't always a bad thing. So guys, thanks for uh, coming along. And gosh, this might be the last video with Hi-Ho Silver. Um, like I kind of talked about originally, man, this thing has come a long way but it may be going away to a new home. I, I don't know, we'll see, but I think this is going to be the last time we see this thing. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a respectable Jeep now. It's, uh, it's clean. Everything works. And uh, again, hopefully we've got another WJ on the road for a little bit longer. Who, who knows what the next owner will uh, <laughs> do to the poor thing, but we've done our WJ rescue mission one more time and guys we'll keep hitting them and uh, as long as I can keep finding them cheap and guys as always thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next time